from Saul. Here it is then, brothers and sisters, amen. All of us at some point in our lives find ourselves in trouble. No matter how careful you are, no matter how much you try to make sure things are together. And if you're like me, I'm a future planner. I love to plan for the future. Everything that I do, everything that I have accomplished was by future planning. Even my marriage, I planned how I wanted everything to go. But sometimes your plan doesn't go to the place or to the extent of perfectness that you want it to go. Because every now and again, there are itches and glitches that, that happens that causes you to find yourself in a place where you need help. And many times, amen, our place of help does not come from the person that we expected help to come from. Amen. Whenever trouble comes, in most instances, and many of us can declare it, that when trouble comes in most instances, it is not the person who you live with or the persons you are associated with that always save you out of your trouble. Amen? Amen? All right. Maybe you have some good people because I know that if you find somebody in your family that will help you all the time, I promise you that one day they're going to get tired. And I promise you that after a few years, amen, of constantly trying to take you out of trouble, they are going to say, I, I can't do this no more. Matter of fact, as soon as your name come up on the phone, they cut the call. And if they see you're still calling, they'll turn off the phone because they get tired of helping you. Am I talking to some real people in here today? And because the truth is, amen, a human being, it is the proclivities of us, amen, to try to deal with certain things for a period of time. But the consistency of something has the ability to cause you to lose the strength and the, the, the impetus to deal with things after it is consistent. And many times because of the consistency of your situation, it pushes you to a place where you want to give up. It pushes you to a place where you realize that there are some things that persons who love you cannot handle. And there are some things that persons who care about you, even though they care about you, they'll get tired of you. But there comes a time when you have to look to Jesus. Ah, it doesn't matter who it is. There comes a time when your focus is going to switch from human help because people can only do so much and no more. Here it is, we find David in this position because he's in a position where he thinks that he would be delivered. He's looking for deliverance. He's looking for help. He's running for his life because the truth is the devil is after all of us lives. It's not the breath that you breathe. It's not amen, the air that you take in, but he's after your spiritual life. It is the word of God that declares to us through Peter. He says that the devil is out like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's coming after you. It is you that testified just last year that I will never stop praising God. It's a lot of people who testified no devil, no, no prime minister, nobody is going to stop me from coming to church and I'm going to serve God and I'm going to do this and I'm going to holler and I'm going to scream and give God praise and just one thing happened and everything got shut down. One thing happened and everything turned haywire. And many of us, the first thing that the devil will do in order to stop us is to give us the spirit of fear. 
Once he placed the spirit of fear, anxiety in your spirit, it will cause you to think uh, of the impossibilities. Here it is. It is Paul that declares to Timothy, he says, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, amen, and of power and of a sound mind. Here it is. The sound mind simply means that he gives you the ability uh, to act sensibly in all situations. It doesn't mean, amen, a lot of people were questioning the credibility of the church throughout this particular situation, asking where is the church. The church is not dead. I said, can I say it again? The church is not dead. The church cannot be closed. They can close the building, but they can't close the church. Amen. They can shut down the building and, and take the keys. But the church is a set of people that knows how to give God even in the midst of prison situation. That's the reason why, brothers and sisters, you are to understand who you are. You are a representative of the kingdom of God who is called to make an effect in the midst of crisis. In other words, even if you're dying, you still have a worship. Even if you're going under pressure, you're still praying for somebody to get deliverance. Even when there's no money in your pocket, you can declare, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall. So he gives you a sound mind to reason things. He, he may give you a sound mind and that is the reason why amen we, we had sense enough to know that we are to follow the rules and the guidelines of the prime minister. It's not that the church has lost its power. The devil is a liar. The church still got power. Oh God I wish I had two persons in here. Just three persons. The church still got power the church still got power here it is uh, and David recognized that he's in trouble and he realizes that even though he's searching for help the help that he's searching for is now in a territory of persons who are his enemies uh, you got to understand brothers and sisters David if you read the book of Samuel you recognize that David became friends amen and was even at one point was going to fight against his own people can you imagine can you imagine the God that you serve can cause you to live in the presence of your enemies can I talk to somebody today the reason why you are still here is, is not that the enemy did not have enough power to take you out but God has given you the grace which is sufficient to live against some bad mind people can I talk to some real people in here you have your business and people want to shut it down you 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 have some ideas and people tell you that your ideas are not credible because the leave amen that you are nobody but can I tell you that God will allow you to survive in the midst of your enemies and they cannot touch you God will allow you to survive in the midst of a pandemic and COVID-19 cannot take you out even if it takes your body it can't take your life God will allow you to have heart attack and the heart attack can't kill you God will allow you to have sugar diabetes this and it can't kill you in the presence of the enemy but he can't take your life do I have somebody in here that's been through some things that you are in the presence of the enemy and they still trying to figure out how comes you're still surviving oh God I wish I had somebody in here that could lift your hands and give God praise because you're surviving in the presence of your enemies oh God I don't hear nobody in here you you are still living among our God the serpents but I hear the writer declare that no weapon that is formed against you do I have somebody in here that can jump on your feet lift your hands and let the devil know I survive because he heard me I survive because he heard me I survive because he heard me somebody give him glory in this house 
Uh, David, David is surviving in the presence of his enemy. God is giving him the ability to thrive in spite of who was after him. Don't you understand that Saul knew David? But even in the midst of David's greatness, Saul did not remember who David was. If you read the Bible, even before he fought against the Philistine, the Bible said that Saul had a demon in him and it was David that played and caused the devil and the demons to get out of him. And here it is. You can understand that David is in the presence of Saul every day of his life. And Saul, amen, tries to kill David when David became victorious over the Philistine. Can you imagine that everybody is fighting the same devil, everybody is fighting the same enemy, but because you have victory over the enemy, somebody hates you that you survive the onslaught of the enemy. In other words, David fought the best soldier of the Philistine and the word of God declares to us, amen, that because of that, Saul hated David. Even after fighting Goliath, Saul had the audacity to ask, who is this young man? But he did not remember it was the same David that cast out the demons. It was, did not remember it was the same David that caused him to have the ability to go to sleep. What are you trying to say? Many times it is the people that you help that turns against you. Ooh, can I preach this like how I feel this today? Many times it's the people that you're good to that tries to tear you down. Many times it's the people that you fought for that tries to destroy you. But I come here to tell the devil today as long as I'm a child of God, the Lord knoweth them that are his. He hears the cry of the righteous. He, he knows what you're going through. He knows what the enemy is trying to do and the devil cannot stop a child of God who God has anointed to survive. Just touch yourself and tell yourself you are anointed to survive. Can I, can I preach this like how I feel it? The Bible tells us in the psalm. David start this particular psalm because when he reflects as to what God has brought him out of. David started with a praise. In other words, David recognized that it had to be God that delivered him out of his situation. Have you ever had a had to be God moment before where you know that it's not because of your knowledge, it's not because of your uh, linguistic skills that brought you out of your trial. It was not because of your faithfulness, but it was because he was faithful in spite of what you were going through. Do I have somebody in here that know that when that car was supposed to turn over with you in it, it was not because the driver was skillful, but it was because God was with you and tell the devil you can't take his life yet. Is there anybody in here that was in a place where you had no money in your pocket and the bills were due and all kind of things were happening one behind the other and somebody just called you in the midst of your situation and bless you and you knew that it's not because of your abilities but it was God that delivered you out of your trial. Here it is. David declares to us that God hear it the voice of the righteous. God knows those who are his and it doesn't matter what it is you're going through. God knows your voice. Is there anybody in here that know God knows every voice of a believer? He, he knows your cry. He knows what you're going through. He knows your struggle. He, he knows the hardship that you're going through. I love this text because it simply means that God does not hear everybody. Can I, can I say that again? The righteous are a set of people who God have chosen before the very foundation of the world. God has brought you, amen, brought you with 
with his blood. He knew you even before your mama knew your daddy. He knew you even before, amen, your mother and father consummated the marriage. He knew you. Oh God, can I, can I just bring Jeremiah just for a little bit? He says, Jerry, I know the thought that I have towards you. Thought of good and not of evil, but of an expected end. I got to tell you, I know who you are and because I know who you are, I have my hands on you and because I have my hands on you, whenever you cry, whenever you cry, I know what you're going through because I'm in 